Welcome to Electron Online. Continuing our series on particle physics, we're now going to take a closer look at a few particles, one of them, the photon. So let's start with the photon. Now, the photon is actually a really mysterious particle, even though it's ubiquitous, it's everywhere. The whole universe and everywhere around you, it's filled with, with photons. So what is a photon? Well, the way to understand a photon, what it really is, is probably taking a look at various aspects of how photons interact with other particles, how photons exist, what they do, how they share energy and so forth. So after a few more videos, including this one here, hopefully we have a better idea of what a photon is. So some basic things about photons. First of all, a photon is a piece of energy or a chunk of energy. The energy that's being exchanged between any object in the universe and any other object in the universe is done so by sharing photons, by sending photons from one to another, and we'll get into that in just a moment. So it's really a piece or a chunk of energy. Secondly, we can say that the photon has no mass and it moves at the speed of light. So whatever it is, there's no mass, you can put them on a scale. Well, actually you can because they can only exist if they move at the speed of light. So you can't stop them and put them on a scale and weigh them, but they still don't have mass. So no mass, they move at the speed of light. A photon acts like a particle. It turns out a photon can hit another particle like an electron or a proton or something and actually bump it like a billiard ball, bill, bumping another billiard ball and making it move. So photons do have properties that make them look and act like they're particles, even though they don't have mass. And as a particle, a photon has momentum. So just like when one billiard ball hits another billiard ball and makes it move, a photon can hit an electron and make it move. So that means it has momentum. Kind of interesting that a particle that has no mass actually has momentum. And finally, we can say that the energy of a photon is quantized. So each photon has a certain amount of energy and it's a fixed amount of energy and it's proportional to its frequency. So we can say that the energy of a photon is equal to some constant times the frequency of, of the photon, the frequency of oscillation of the photon. All photons, as they move through space at the speed of light, they oscillate like a wave because they're basically a piece of a wave and a particle. Wow, well, we'll get into that a little bit more later. Now, H is a constant, it's called Planck's constant. It's named after Planck because he did a lot of research on subatomic particles like this. And the H, the Planck constant, is equal to 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 joules per second. Wow, that's a very small number. Now, since the speed of light is equal to the frequency times the wavelength, or the velocity of any wave is equal to the frequency times the wavelength, we can write the frequency as the fraction of the speed of light divided by the wavelength. So instead of writing h times f, h times the frequency, we can write as h times c over lambda. So let's do a little calculation. Let's figure out the energy of a typical photon coming from the sun, which has a wavelength of about 500 nanometers. On average, of course, there's some that have longer wavelengths and some that have shorter wavelengths. So let's say a typical photon where the lambda is equal to 500 nanometers and the nanometers 10 to the minus 9 meters, so that would be 500 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. And let's go ahead and plug that into the equation here. So does this equal to 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34, that's joules times seconds, multiplied times the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, and then we divide that by the wavelength, which would be 500 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. Now, for that, of course, we need a calculator. And let's see how much energy a typical photon from the sun has. So 6.626 e to the 34 minus times 3 e to the 8 divided by 500 e to the 9 minus. And it looks like that is equal to 3 point, well, let's call it 3.98 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. That's not a lot of energy, but of course photons are pretty small and there's a whole lot of them coming from the sun every single second. Now, that number is so small that we like to sometimes convert to electron volts. And so the conversion factor, so we would multiply it times um, one electron volt divided by 1.6 uh, times 10 to the minus 19 joules. So the ratio between electron volts and joules is the same as the single charge uh, equivalent to a coulomb, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. So if we divide that number by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, we get 2.48. 
So we get 2.48 electron volts. So the energy in the typical photon coming from the sun is somewhere between two and three electron volts. Average is about two and a half electron volts. That's the energy of a single photon. Now, the intensity of electromagnetic radiation, basically what a photon is, an, accum an accumulation of photons is electromagnetic radiation. So you say, okay, how can that be? Because isn't electromagnetic radiation kind of like a wave, a change in electric fields that move through space? And the answer is yes. But that's actually broken up into small little chunks, which are called photons. So photons are basically chunks of electromagnetic radiation, and together, in unison, they form electromagnetic radiation. So we'll look at that unison a little bit more in, in a future video here. So let's say here we have the sun. And the sun shines, and so therefore electromagnetic radiation is leaving the sun, but in a way what is happening is we have single photons leaving the sun altogether, forming that sunlight, that electromagnetic radiation. So the intensity of electromagnetic radiation or sunlight can be written in terms of watts per square meter or joules per second per square meter. Another way of looking at it is we can say, well, how much energy is imparted by sunlight and so by the time the sunlight reaches the earth the amount of energy deposited is about 1361 watts per square meter so that's the intensity of sunlight and so again it's in watts per square meter so how many photons is that wow well since each photon carries this many joules and the intensity is 1361 joules per second per square meter then how many photons of light reach the earth for every square meter or I should say sunlight, reach the earth every square meter based upon this ratio. So if we want to calculate the number of photons that reach the earth, so the number of photons is equal to the amount of energy reaching the earth every, for every square meter, which would be 1361 joules per second. That's how much energy reaches the earth every second for every square meter of surface and we divide that by the energy per photon and so that would be the energy per photon would be 3.98 times 10 to the minus 19 joules per photon so again here we'll, we like to use joules because we're working with energy in terms of joules per second so if we take 1361 and we divide it by 3.98 e to the 19 minus equals, it looks like 3.42 times 10 to the 21, that would be photons per second, per second, per square meter. So, sunlight reaching the earth will contain 3.42 times 10 to the 21 photons for every square meter surface. That's an enormous quantity of photons. Just imagine how many photons actually leave the sun in every given second. So that 93 million miles away, when it reaches the Earth, one square meter of it contains that many photons. Just absolutely amazing. So again, what is a photon? Well, we're not quite sure yet based upon this, but what we're going to do over this video and the next several videos is zero in on how photons interact and slowly try to form a picture of it. We'll look at how photons scatter in the atmosphere. We'll look at all the various experiments that we've done to identify photons as much as possible. And based upon that, I think we'll form a pretty good picture. Now, um, another way that we want to look at is we know that all matter in the universe contains energy, energy in the form of heat, and heat is really the kinetic energy contained in the vibration of the atoms and that object. So any object, be it a chair, being a, a person, being an ice cream in the freezer, everything has atoms and they all, those atoms vibrate. The hotter the object is, the faster the atoms vibrate. The colder the object is, the slower the atoms vibrate. And as the atoms vibrate, they carry with them an oscillating electric field. And that oscillating electric field causes electromagnetic radiation to emanate from objects. And that's how objects cool. When you take a hot object, like a hot brick that just came out of the oven, put it there and on the table, the brick will slowly cool down as the energy radiates away from the brick as electromagnetic radiation leaves the brick from the vibrating atoms. It turns out that the frequency of the photons, because remember, electromagnetic radiation emanating from an object is really photons leaving the object, and the frequency of the photons leaving the object is equal to the frequency of the oscillation of the atoms or the oscillating atoms. Wow. So how fast is that frequency? What is the frequency 
of a typical atom in an object like that. Let's say at room temperature, or let's say from a brick that just came out of the oven that gives off a certain amount of electromagnetic radiation. Well, let's say we have an object that, um, hmm, let's see here, that let's take a photon again, the same photon, the yellow photon that has 2.48 electron volts of radiation. So let's say we take a piece of metal and we heat it hot enough so it begins to glow visible light so that it's thousands of degrees in temperature. And let's say that yellow photon leaves the brick or leaves the, the, molten, the molten metal. So let's say that we have a yellow photon, yellow photon, and so then we know that the wavelength is 500 nanometers. So the question is, what's the equation here? Where did it go? Right here. Here's the relationship between frequency, wavelength, and the speed of light. So we know that the frequency is therefore equal to the speed of light divided by the wavelength. The speed of light is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. The wavelength associated with yellow light would be 500 nanometers, which is 500 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. And let's see what that ratio is. So we have 3 e to the 8 divided by 500 e to the 9 minus, and we get 6 times 10 to the minus 14, oh, not minus 14, to the positive 14 hertz, which would be cycles per second or vibrations per second. Now 10 to the 12, well, that would be trillion, so 6 times 10 to the 14, that would be 600 trillion, so this is equal to 600 trillion vibrations or oscillations per second, trillion per second. All right, so we have molten metal, and it's so hot that it glows visible light, including yellow photons. The atoms would vibrate at a frequency of 600 trillion times per second. As they do that, they emanate electromagnetic radiation, so they emanate photons. Now the question is, as it's vibrating, for every one oscillation, does it give off one photon? Is it two oscillations? Well, we'll get to that. But at least we know that it sends out photons, those are particles of energy, that then flood the region around it. If it's out in space, of course, it would travel for billions and billions of miles. If it's here on the Earth, it probably just travel far enough until it hits another object. That other object will absorb that photon, and so the energy then will be transferred from one object to the next. So now you have a little bit better idea what a photon is, but if you're still wondering, stay tuned. We have some more videos as we try to explore exactly what a photon is. Welcome to Electron Line. Continuing our series on particle physics, we're now going to take a look at some very known and very famous particles. Famous particles? Why do we say famous particles? They're not famous particles. Let's try this again. <laughs> Welcome to Electron Line. Continuing our series on particle physics, we're now going to take a closer look at some of the more... What kind of particles are we talking about? <laughs> Not famous particles. Welcome to Electron Line. Now we're going to take a closer look at... No, 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 no. Oh. <laughs> this is not going well. <laughs> oh.